Dom in London, hello. It's uh, June 12th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour, equally addicted to people, places and things. Trying to be with the right people, in the right place, with the right things. And these days, I probably am, but not like it used to be. What it used to be like, drink in hand, trying to be convivial, have happy times, Yet under the, underneath all of that, dependent on drink to function. So I guess for a long time maybe an, a functioning heavy drinker or alcoholic. Not sure where I crossed the line, other than to say after the first drink I ever took, that was probably when I crossed the line, because drink changed the way I felt. So I didn't really learn how to feel life as it is. Or when I didn't drink, I was probably a little bit more fearful, and then more fearful, often putting on a brave face and relying on a very brittle ego to cover up the fear inside. So what's helped me find sobriety one day at a time is family, community, society, professionals, and in particular a fellowship called Alcoholics Anonymous. I never speak for AA, never can, never will. It's full of unique, authentic people who can speak for themselves where they wish to. And that was just a lorry going by with all the empties from a restaurant. You didn't hear the clattering of bottles, but it was very loud just a few moments ago. So AA, the Fellowship of AA, Al Alcoholics Anonymous, full of unique, authentic people, speak for themselves where they will. And it is the many voices in the Fellowship, always, which makes the difference and it works best face to face where you see which, what you see is what you get on a daily basis AA is as good as the day you go to it and sometimes it's wonderful and sometimes we walk away thinking I need another meeting because that one didn't do what I needed it to do to bring me back into balance so we are human beings living a, a human journey and life is the journey not the destination we have a destination each night. It's called bedtime. So AA has helped me. <coughs> so I should share a little bit of what I've been thinking about this morning at the beginning of this. And therein, then follows the daily reflections which I've done over the years and also the step six reading for this month, June. So what's been on my mind? Well, last night I received a, a communication via Facebook that I must remove my videos and uh, observe Tradition 11 which is about recognition at the level of press, radio or films and I understand the reason why when it was first done but that reason why is long gone and maybe, maybe we need to look at anonymity where we find sanctuary within the rooms of AA it's like going to a doctor or a psychologist we try observe people's anonymity and it's sacrosanct because it's a sanctuary where we find the truth of who we can be today open honest and willing uh, a 12th 12 step, 12 step program or 12 principles of living which are timeless and work anytime anywhere and 12 traditions which hold us together in unity service and recovery so I don't know the answer on all those questions. So I just need to live in the day. And my focus is on ex sharing experience, strength and hope of recovery. Not about a tradition which may or may not be useful in the context of now, today. So what's been on my mind about the steps and how to put them into action? Well the first observation which goes up on my website, learning to be me. Life confused me from the get-go, and it did. Good people and bad people baffled me. I didn't understand them too well. Never sure of their intent. Looking back, I feel I was mainly a good person with a lot of harsh experiences. And that's because I just didn't understand what was going on. I had confusion and a drink in hand. Life seemed okay. I could cope with the reality that I thought I was in by actually suppressing my feelings about it and not saying what I felt. I feel confused, baffled about what's going on. 
alcohol helped live with oblivion and was my best friend because it was it took the edge off it fixed all my outlooks it actually made my outlooks less than they used to be no I make friends with humans as they are today ah I don't know if you can hear that there goes another restaurant with its bottles now I can make friends with humans who, as they are today and can form relationships in an open honest way even though they may still baffle me so I don't need to know all the answers all I need to do is engage and find out what's going on oh this is really good magic to my ears the empty is being chucked out so people did baffle me and I fell in love and fell out of love and I did all the things which I thought normal people did but because my feelings were suppressed I never maybe told those I loved most how much I loved them and then they couldn't tell me either whether they loved me just the same or not so a learning lesson I like to say I love you these days when I mean it and I do learning to be a the next one is learning to be a trusted companion as time goes by truth helps me learn to be open honest and willing truth learning the truth not my not my perception of what I want or my belief or a faith it's the truth of now so if I learn the truth it helps me to learn to be open honest and willing how to love be loved takes time and it does because we built trust in partnerships which is all about daily reflections today not to judge others simply accept them as they are what I can then do is judge how I feel about it I've made friends form loving relationships and know there will be vexatious people too best left to their own devices today so yes there will be vexatious people that we encounter from all over in, in all situations but the gift is not to actually engage and be vexatious back unless we really really have to and then all we need to do is state how we feel what we can and cannot do and then either settle ourselves and if the vexatious person can settle themselves maybe we can get on with them or we remove ourselves because we must or we are hiding from the truth and reality of now not easy not always what we want to do not always what we feel is right but if we start judging others and suggest they change their behavior to suit us I don't know that that is a good idea I don't know that that is a good idea so there we are June 12th this year and previous years to follow with the daily reflections and chapter 6 step 6 of the AA toolkit 12 steps in action Don in London hello my daily video all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behavior my substance alcohol my behavior always to be to be at extremes of understanding and response when drinking and that was some while ago so today one day at a time in recovery and I share here the daily reflections this book from AA Alcoholics Anonymous this is just one voice and uh, we need the voice of many to make sense of our lives today hence fellowship so for to for this day June 12th in this book daily reflections it says this forming true partnerships but it is the for it is form start again but it is from our twisted relations with family friends and society at large that many of us have suffered the most we have been especially stupid and stubborn about them the primary fa fact that we fail to that we fail to recognize is our total inability to form a true partnership with another human being in other words not only seeing our own point of view but their point of view can these words apply to me am I still unable to form a true partnership with another human being what a terrible handicap that would be for me to carry into my sober life in my sobriety I will meditate and pray to discover how I may be a trusted friend and companion and for me meditation and prayer is not contingent on understanding God of others it's having an understanding of what makes life work in the moment of now and for me God is truth love 
and wisdom of others. So when I share the serenity prayer, to God a good conscience, it's seeing the big picture of all good which can happen, seeing other people's point of view as well as my own. So to God, or and a good conscience, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is just for today. Don in London, hello, it's uh, 12th of June 2009, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour, my substance, alcohol, my behaviour, trying to be perfect and never so, and being in recovery one day at a time seems to work for me, just one day at a time, living life as it can be and accepting what is rather than what has been or what might be, so if I live in the present moment I've got a better chance of having some happiness or sadness, joy or sad, as the day goes on. And uh, quite a number of my friends recently <coughs> have had problems with feedback they've received, either from me or from other people, and it can have a very detrimental effect because it challenges the very core of our sobriety. Sometimes we get feedback which we don't like, and uh, that's okay. At the same time, we need to know what it is that people are saying to us. So part of this video is really saying feedback is good, even when it hurts. So uh, my videos, as I say, all about recovery, and part of recovery is trying to find the truth of now. Uh, be open, honest and willing to make a go of this one day we have to stay alive. That sounds very dramatic, but it's not. Not meant to be anyway. So what helps me keep in recovery is family, community, professional help, for the other complaints I've got besides uh, an, an addiction, addictive personality, I guess, uh, is the fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. And Alcoholics Anonymous, I cannot speak for it, never will. It's full of unique, authentic people going about their daily business and life. And it's not for me to speak on their behalf, ever. So AA, uh, and uh, I say this very clearly because it needs to be said, does not have spokespeople out there uh, making statements about what it can and cannot do. AA is just a fellowship, it's a, a society, it's not an organisation, it cannot fix you. It can give you the opportunity to see how you are and how I am and see if I can make any differences to my behaviour and attitude on a daily basis. So at the beginning of every meeting I go to the fellowship uh, here in London, UK, 720 in all apparently in London. The figure changes depending on whether some groups shut down or other groups open up. It's just the way of life. There is always constant, constant change for ourselves and for the fellowship. It matures always one way or another. I suppose in spite of people really because it's a collective group of people just trying to stay one day sober. So at the preamble, sorry at the meeting, the preamble is said and it goes like this. Every meeting I go to Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. Funnily enough, I was thinking about about 10,000 things when I was saying that, and you know, often we're on automatic pilot, and uh, we miss feedback we get from people. We can be in the street and uh, be standing at, like an obstruction, and somebody say, will say, get out of the way, and we may or may not think that, how dare they say that to me, and there are other parts of feedback we get about personal behaviour, attitudes and stuff like that and they are unwelcome often unless we've invited them and sometimes when we invite feedback from others we're going to hear good things and we're going to hear, hear things which we don't want to agree with. Problem is if we've been uh, an addict or addicted to self-obsessed behaviour and unable to break a habit which was killing us, how on earth are we going to deal with feedback? <coughs> and it's very difficult because Feedback is about our insides, our emotions and our feelings, our attitudes and how we behave with the world. 
And if we're used to uh, getting criticism which we don't like, and we stop listening, and we often stop listening in our in our childhood, listening in our adult in our adult mind and body can be very difficult because we are outraged that anybody offers feedback in the first place and then offers to judge our attitude and behavior. So if we are feeling judged, we are most likely to reject, get angry, deny, feel the frustration of how dare they do that to me. And the answer is, if you ask for feedback or we don't ask for feedback, sometimes it's going to hurt because it means some change may be necessary to make life work. So the fellowship is really good because it suggests through the 12 steps that we can change our attitude and behavior. And uh, I've had to change mine an awful lot. And I found myself uh, careering along through my life, not necessarily knowing who I was, and not necessarily understanding the impact I had on other, other people. So sometimes it was good and sometimes it was blinking awful. And there's been a couple of occasions recently where one person invited some feedback of, of, about a certain behaviour and I haven't heard from them since. And uh, that's sad. Uh, it wasn't me judging actually, it was just me feeding back the information. So with the best will in the world, sometimes it's better to be silent and not say anything because it won't be received and it won't be understood. And then um, one or two of my other connections have had some very detrimental feedback and they're not dealing with it very well. And the reason why we, could, we don't deal with it very well, uh, we don't get it that often, so it feels like a very harsh, harsh judgment. So we are unable often to get the balance in what other people are saying. And my, my solution to it is this. Number one, I cannot change anything I've done which has caused people to feel that I am a certain way in my attitudes and behavior. Once they have fed back to me that my attitude and behavior is either good or bad, I am open to, hopefully, a bit of change. But the problem is, often we find ourselves getting angry and confronting people in a way which is inappropriate, which is to blame them for the problem of our behavior, rather than look at our behavior generally. And that's very difficult. It's very difficult because it's very wounding. It goes into the core of our self-esteem. So if we feel our esteem is knocked really badly, and is sometimes we don't have any at all, and our ego comes out to play, we fight back, we say bad words, we say to you, and we get nowhere. So the gift really is, in feedback, you've got to take it, because if you don't take it and do something about it, uh, your relationships, not only with that person, but other people, will be forever hindered. And in the daily reflections today, Funnily enough, this one talks about you know defects of character for the month of June. Uh, that's step six in the attitude and behavioural programme of change. Forming true partnerships. But it is from our twisted relations with family, friends and society at large that many of us have suffered the most. We have been especially stupid and stubborn about them. The primary fact that we fail to recognise is our total inability to form a true partnership with another human being. And that's often because we just don't want to acknowledge we need to change our outlook. Can these words apply to me? Am I still unable to form a true partnership with another human being? Quite often. <laughs> what a terrible handicap that would be for me to carry into my sober life. In my sobriety, I will meditate and pray to discover how I may be tr a trusted friend and companion. And you know what? That's all about honesty. Honesty in the moment of now. And if someone gives us some really... Um, straight honest feedback uh, we need to acknowledge ouch that hurts and what I don't want to do is get defensive and then, then do nothing about it or shut down and say up yours that doesn't work anyway that's just me on feedback we need it we absolutely need feedback or we don't actually start to change our attitude and behavior so in as Bill sees it and I've been trying to do this reading it's a, a bit of an alternative to what I just talked about that is get out of your defects and get into uh, your shortcomings do more of this do more of having self-esteem courage and faith to keep on facing reality and it says here page 125 look beyond the horizon my workshop stands on a hill back of, at the back of our home looking over the valley I see the village community house where our local group meets Beyond the circle of my horizon lies the whole world of AA. The unity of AA, the most cherished quality of our society. 
our, li our lives, the lives of all to come, depend squarely, depend squarely upon it. Without unity, the heart of AA would cease to beat. Our world arteries would no longer carry the life-giving grace of God or good conscience. So for me in all of this, we need feedback. And if we don't, if we don't do anything about it, we won't actually see the promises of a life which is far better. So as I end these videos with the serenity prayer, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. That is what I've done before. Courage to change the things I can, because I get the feedback. And the wisdom to know the difference is just for today. Don in London, good morning. And uh, it's the 12th of June, 2008. And uh, this video all about recovery and living in recovery from addiction. And uh, I go to AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, I don't speak for AA. And I must make that clear. I do not speak for AA, and nobody does particularly. Which is, I guess, one of the things that we say in our preamble, which goes like this. Alcoholics Anonymous, there's a siren going past. Busy policeman this morning, I suspect. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And uh, <coughs> that's it really. There are no leaders in AA, although some feel there may be leaders. Uh, I'm not a leader. I'm just one of, the, one, of the, one of the people who goes to AA and gets something from it a day at a time. And last night I had to wait in. Uh, I've been waiting for two small tables to arrive from Peter Jones, and they have, and they arrived at two minutes to eight, which meant I could hot foot it down to St. Luke's Parish Hall to hear the end of the meeting. I didn't hear the person who shared the chair, and I did share at the meeting, and it was, a, it was one of those which is, it, everything is covered from start to finish, and there are people in post for all the different types of roles that e exist in an AA, AA group. So a secretary, somebody who does the uh, startup, somebody who does tea, somebody who represents the group at, at the uh, intergroup level. There is a little bit of um, office background and admin to be done. And generally, it was just a good meeting. And I saw quite a few people I know there. And it seems to be a bit posh, people dressed up to be there. So I dressed as I was, casually, in my best black leggings and a t-shirt and uh, I felt somewhat underdressed anyway there we go and then afterwards I met up with my girlfriend and a friend of theirs and somebody who's a friend of mine too and we were at the Picasso's on the King's Road and it's nice it's nice when the evening is fresh the sun is just going down and it's just getting dark and we sat and talked for a little while and then uh, somebody else joined us and I had to stay on for a bit longer and I saw all the rollerbladers go past and this happens about once a week or once a month where rollerbladers take over the streets just one at a time and roller, roller skate up and down them and there was even somebody pushing somebody a little baby in a pram whilst on their roller skates which uh, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing but I really don't have an opinion on it Actually, it's none of my business, but it was quite a spectacle, and they play loud music as they go past, so quite good. And yesterday, I was trying to uh, <coughs> do a video on resentments, because actually, resentments are the number one killer in AA. If people go back to resenting life and themselves and other people, it means often they go back to all the old behaviour of how they used to be and get stuck again in the, the plight of drinking and I couldn't do the video last night no matter how much time how many times I tried to do it and start it the problem is I don't have any resent resentments at the moment about anything I'm just okay and getting on with life and sometimes I suppose I could I could talk about it in a, in a bleak way but I had no connection to resentment at all 
none at all whatsoever and it's unusual it means my serenity is working and uh, serenity in the moment only is conditional on understanding several things and it goes like the serenity prayer goes it goes God or good conscience or your good self grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference so maybe the wisdom to know the difference is upon me and patience is required in my life right now around a whole raft of issues I uh, had to go get a uh, referral from my GP to get an ECG which just is making sure my heart is working properly and as far as the, uh, the GP was concerned it was a belt and braces approach and maybe unnecessary because I don't have any heart problems and I haven't had at the same time it's always a good idea to get things checked out so I got a referral letter and then sorted up the King's Road just now and I also popped in to see my mum who is very well and off to uh, stay at my brother's for the weekend this afternoon so she's busy and I know my sister's busy and I'm busy we're all busy doing things so life is going along as it may <coughs> so what about AA and the daily reflections I'm halfway through the day so maybe I've got something to say about what it says in the book and it's the June 12th it says well here we go forming true partnerships but it is from our twisted relations with family friends and society at large that many of us have suffered the most we have been especially stupid and stubborn about them. The primary fact that we fail to recognize what we fail to recognize is our total inability to form a true partnership with another human being. And that comes from the 12 steps and 12 traditions. The question is then posed, can these words apply to me? Am I still unable to form a true partnership with another human being? What a terrible handicap that would be for me to carry into sober life. In my sobriety, I will meditate and pray to discover how I may be trusted, friend and companion. I must stop for a moment, excuse me. I'm back again, and uh, the question is, can I be a trusted friend and companion? Well, I'm learning, and uh, it's brand new. There is no easy way to restart a life and learn new behaviors. We have to learn as we go. And it's a gift, actually. The gift is doing and learning and being a part of. So, uh, that phone call was uh, somebody wanting a bit of advice or a suggestion or two on what to do next. And somehow I seem to be able to do it for other people, but I can't do it for myself without, with, you know, without other outside help. So whilst I may be able to give advice which is helpful, I often need to get advice from another. So I may, I may conduct myself in the right way, or whatever it is. Anyway, coming on to As Bill Sees It, <coughs> and uh, page 168 is about accepting God's gifts. Through many theologians, both th many theologians hold that sudden spiritual experiences amount to a special distinction, if not a divine appointment of some sort. I question this view. Every human being, no matter how, what his attributes, for good or evil, is a part of the divine spiritual economy. Therefore, each of us has his place, and I cannot see that God intends to exalt one over the other. In other words, we're all equal. So it is necessary for all of us to accept whatever positive gifts we receive with a deep humility, always bearing in mind that our neg negative attitudes were first necessary as a means of reducing us to a state that we would be ready for a gift of positive ones by the conversion experience. Your own alcoholism and the immense deflation that finally resulted after ne indeed uh, resulted are indeed the foundation upon which the spiritual experience rests, because we have to know the downside as well as the upside, and the gift of that is learning what it is like to be sober. And uh, I was talking last night to my girlfriend on similar lines, and we were working out, you know, that we were working on a new, brand new page, uh, working out new behaviour, new attitudes, and understanding that uh, maybe for the first time in our lives we were actually getting to grips with our true emotions, and you know that can be quite scary, and. But it's scary, vulnerable, and being vulnerable actually is the key. And as we are vulnerable, we start to understand more as we take on board new, fresh ideas and new feelings that we're experiencing. And I love it. I love it and I relish it. And my problem is that I, I try to go too fast. And then I try and fix things. Uh, I don't let go quite as I should, maybe. And in the let go process and letting in, and letting another help and be supportive, and 
take the lead when the lead is needed in a relationship. You know, it's reciprocity, it's give and take. So I'm learning a great deal. And it's, uh, it's proving to be an absolute gift just to be here in the day. So where's my halfway through the day gone? Well, it's been good so far. And uh, I need to talk to uh, my co my co-conspirator in our relationship and see how things are for her. So I'll be doing that next. And I'm hoping it's all right. Anyway, it's been silent all morning. What shall I do? Get on the telephone, I suspect. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment, find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship that fellowship is AA and today I just want to read from this book 12 Steps and 12 Traditions which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about 12 steps so we can live well open, honest and willing and the 12 traditions in fellowship unity, service and recovery sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time so what is AA? I just share off the preamble which is on this little card which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do to include people around being sober one day at a time and living a spiritual life knowing what our feelings are and not drinking so what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved, and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June, for me, is all about step six. So I share the step, and also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? But it probably boils down to the in the biblical sense the seven si deadly seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet you'll find many version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity 
So pride is the first deadly sin or defect. Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than one than more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the contrary virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD, an epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins. Humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in in the way I understand it, in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society. But around that is a personal code so these 12 steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living and how we do that is entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? From life. And also listening to the many voices in society, and probably in the fellowship of AA, if you stick around long enough. So, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, yes, he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, on all his, his faults, without any reservations whatever, has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator. And again, don't get hung up on creator. It's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilised. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will, under certain, certain conditions, remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's 
step four and then as to a higher power God as I understand him to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished he was lifted right out of me well it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time but when I got to fellowship I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn in AA meetings all over the world statements just like this are heard daily it is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession so in a very complete and literal way all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives and God has proceeded to do exactly that and I would add to that as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking then my defects of character seem to diminish personality traits don't go away completely they just don't but if we ask on a daily basis at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects when men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives they commit a most unnatural act defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation they seem bent upon self-destruction they work against their, best, their own deepest instinct as they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession and uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning and as it says humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience liber liberality and diligence so working on sober rather than working on the next drink here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life for nature and God alike abhor suicide but most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all every normal person wants for example to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society in the society of his fellows and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things indeed God made him that way he did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive it is nowhere evidence evident at least in this life that our creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives indeed that would be foolish to think that so far as we know it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives indeed that would be unnatural since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose and that's to do with our thinking and, and our vices I guess when they drive us blindly or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth or as nature intended that is the measure of our character defects or if you wish our sins if we ask God will certainly forgive all our derelictions but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation that is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves he asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character so indeed it is about building of character and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood and then we found that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction 
but of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too, as many have found. So step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job. In other words, to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect. Because if we try to be perfect from day one, we would fail. We, we would be back on pride and self-will. The key words, entirely ready, underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? In an absolute sense, practically nobody has it. The best we can do, with all honesty that, can, that we can summon, is to try to have it. Even then, the best of us will discover, to our dismay, that there is always a sticking point, a point at which we say, no, I can't give this up yet. And we should often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry, this I will never give up. Such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves. No matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence, as we've got to where we are in our nature, and providence, that is, as the world is today. Some who feel they have done but well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves. Yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway. But when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life. However it turns out to be. What we must recognise now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow? Or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say, so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds? And even while staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us, for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger. And I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path and it happens to be mine and what I've learned in recovery my path if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life gossip bound with our anger a polite form of murder by character assassination has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. And uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. 
But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. Else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not? rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it. And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call, it, only we call that retiring. Consider too our talent for pr procrastination, which is really sloth in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of, the, of such defects as these and few of us would, be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction, thinking we're right, and we wonder why nobody's following us, we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up. But if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right, or that my way or the highway is the right way, then we are alone again and isolated. And we may not drink, but we're certainly not as sober as we could be. Some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals. But, you know, strict adherence on a daily basis, life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways. So, defects, as well as virtues will be around. There are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress. Seen in this light, step six is still difficult but not at all impossible. The only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying. And that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol, we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go 
righteousness and every other excessive excessive outlook or personality trait are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up let's dispose of what happen, appears to be a hazardous open end we have left it is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection we know that some delay however might be pardoned that word in the mind of a rationalizing alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long term meaning he could say how very easy sure I'll head towards perfection but I'm certainly not going to hurry maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely of course this won't do such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalization at the very least we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible or complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked or we provoke others the moment we say no never our minds close against the grace of God or common sense after all what else would God's words be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man we're not talking rocket science here we're talking common sense delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal this is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us as nature intended nature and providence all these wonderful words I like because you know spiritual is now spiritual is in the moment it's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now and either we accept life on life's terms acceptance is the key always or we get into trouble again and it's being defiant or angry against our situation often that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve so just a reminder the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, and diligence and I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past I was criticized deeply by someone when they I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect it's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out my defect would be not to say it if you get my drift so these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven so how does it work for me on a daily basis well in the morning I say how am I feeling why and what can I do and if I feel okay given my current situation my feelings fit my my experience right now then life is understandable and comprehensible I can I can get on with it 
but if my feelings don't fit my current reality my feelings are over the top in some way in a particular direction of those defects or sins or my virtues are without foundation courage, faith and confidence over elated I need to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyse to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now why? because I haven't given it, I haven't given it a second thought what can I do? consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent and the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear brave facing an ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today